Welcome to another episode of The Common Man's Take on Sports with Kevin and... Quentin. Alright, Quentin. So, let's talk a little NFL since we did some MLB in our last podcast. Let's talk about the results from week five. So, the Bears finally... Snap. Won a game. Yeah. That instead of giving it... They tried to give it away, but the Commanders didn't want it. And so they ended up winning 40 to 20. A lot of people will look at this and go, oh, see, we told you Justin Fields wasn't a bust. That's what he's supposed to do. 282 yards for four touchdowns, a little over 50%. But I still think that Justin Fields has some more work to do to prove he wasn't a draft bust. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, <clears throat> no, it's just one game. You know, he still had they, they still have like twelve games left on the season. So I mean there's still a lot <clears throat> for Justin Fields left to prove. So yeah, I mean sure he got two hundred and eighty two yards, four passing touchdowns, but still he's got some work to do with the Bears. He's still not uh <clears throat> he, he he still hasn't really fixed the Bears. Well, that's just one game out of the first five that he actually looked good. I think that, you know, as they play tougher opponents, he's like the Vikings. I think he'll come back down to earth. I think that was a, I will see. We'll see. But I just don't think that's who he is. I think the commanders just aren't that good either. Somebody had to win that game. The Bears ended up winning it. The <laughs> Steelers Ravens game. The Ravens gave that game away with eight drops. Their receivers had eight drops. And if you go back and look at the replay, like that was on the receivers. There was one one pass that was kinda on Lamar, but I I didn't really the play design I don't think was good either for the end zone toss. It should have been a back shoulder throw. And it wasn't. He just lobbed it up for Odell to get. But the problem was the the DB was in front of Odell. So I don't I don't think that they called the right play on that one because the the play was a, it was on like the uh, ten ten yard line I think, and so it was supposed to be a short quick out pass. And so the the type of pass it was supposed to be was based off what the defense was doing if they were coming at him or you know, drop it in coverage. And it just, uh, the play design itself was bad, but the Ravens played a sloppy game. Eight passes dropped. That That's, the receivers were not helping Lamar Jackson in that game at all. Yeah, I agree. You know, um, I watched the replay of that game, and it was just terrible. Um, you know, none of, Barely any of his receivers could um, could really help him out. Not barely any were helping Lamar out. I know that Odell Beckham left early, but good grief, man! Rashad Bateman dropped passes. Angelor dropped passes. Everybody was dropping passes, and and so some of the passes they were dropping were like right on their numbers. They should have been catching them. Like a, a NFL receiver should have been. They were wide open. Should have been catching them. About three of them should have been touchdowns. And so, you know, anytime your receivers drop eight passes, you're not going to win a game. And so the Steelers grinded out, got lucky on the last play in the fourth quarter, scored a touchdown, won the game. But the Ravens really gave that game away. The Steelers didn't win it. I don't think the Steelers are that good. How they are three and two, I don't know. I think that the... That's going to catch up to them. I think the Steelers are going to have a losing season. We'll see. They're actually leading that division now, which. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how the Steelers got three and two. I don't know how they went. I don't know how they're in first place in the AFC North. I don't know how, but they were lucky. They were just lucky that they were out, that they were able to beat the Ravens. I I agree. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> they played horrible. They played sloppy. That's a prob- That's probably 
the defense played well. They obviously held the Steelers for most of the game. They did give up a safety, which was unfortunate. On The offense is what killed the Ravens. Their offense was completely out of sync. They played sloppy. I don't, I don't know what was going on, but whatever was going on, they need to go back to the drawing board with that. Maybe it was an aberration, you know, just a one-game thing, in case of the drops. Maybe they, they shore it up next week. But, man, they need to do something because you're not going to win with, uh, you know, dropping that many passes. So the offense didn't do the team any favors. We'll see if they clean that up a bit. I know that they were – that some of the plays that Todd Munkin drew up, as the offensive coordinator were great. The problem is the offense just wasn't executing them. So uh, we'll see what happens with them going forward, see if they can get better. Move on to the Panthers-Lions. I knew the Lions would win this game. They're way better than the Panthers right now. Um... I was surprised at the Panthers' offense, though. Bryce Young seems to be getting better. He was 25 of 41 for 247 yards, three touchdowns, but he did have the two picks. So he looks like he's getting more comfortable in the offense. They just the Lions are really good. They're four and one now. Um, the Lions are way better than people think. They're going to give a lot of people problems. People are starting to pay attention to the Detroit Lions now. Um, yeah. But I knew the Lions would win that game. Yeah. Um. Ev everyone knew the Lions were going to win that game. But, yeah, it does seem that, it does seem that Bryce Young is getting better um, <clears throat> every single game. Because against the Lions defense... He was pretty good, you know, three touchdowns, but two picks. I mean, that's all right. He didn't have a fumble this game, so that's good. Yeah, that's good. Miles Sanders did, and so did Chenault, but I, Panthers, I don't care what the coach said. The Panthers are still rebuilding. Matt Rule screwed them up. They're rebuilding, and they'll continue to rebuild. There's no – they they got a long way to go. Frank Reich has a huge task in front of him to repair what Matt Rule destroyed in his tenure as the Panthers head coach slash GM. So, Lions, however, are on the other end of that spectrum. Man, they're, they're killing it. David Montgomery had 19 carries for 109 yards. And they had three rushing touchdowns, three passing touchdowns. Jared Goff threw for 236 yards. Defense was outstanding like they have been all year. Aiden Hutchinson had that one-handed interception, plus he had a sack in the game and two tackles for loss. So he's having another monster season. Game that surprised me, though, Jaguars and Bills. The Jaguars jumped on the Bills early on the offensive side of the ball. And that Jaguars defense was all over Josh Allen. And so that that surprised me that so the end score of that game, twenty five to twenty, was not indicative of how that game went. The Jaguars went up eleven and nothing in the first quarter. They didn't score in the second because the Bills defense tightened up, but the Bills only scored seven points. Neither team scored in the third, and then the Jaguars scored 14 in the fourth, and the Bills scored 13. So that was one, one touchdown and two field goals, and the Jaguars got two touchdowns in the fourth. Right, that score is not indicative of the way that game went. The Jaguars looked good. Trevor Lawrence was through for 315 yards, and Travis Etienne ran for another 136 and two touchdowns, and Lawrence had one passing touchdown. I, the Jaguars are better than people think. They're just, they had a few hiccups, but I think the Jaguars are going to win their division. I just don't see anybody who's going to catch them. I mean, the Colts, maybe, but I don't know. I just feel like 
the Jaguars are better than the Colts. Yeah, um, I, yeah, I agree with you. You know, um, I do have a feeling like that the Jaguars will win the their division again. I feel like it's gonna be a tough race between them and the Colts, but I think that uh, there's been too many injury problems with Anthony Richardson, their uh, starting QB, and I think that's gonna really. Um, affect this AFC South battle, but yeah, I gotta go with the Jaguars here. You got Colts Titans. The Colts beat the Titans pretty soundly. Um, Garner Min- Anthony Richardson played, but Gardner Minshew played for the majority of the game. Again, like you were talking about the injury. Thing just keeps killing Anthony Richardson. I did say where Jonathan Taylor re-signed for a very hefty extension. So they finally came to terms. The Colts finally realized that they ain't doing nothing without Jonathan Taylor. So they officially re-signed him and he'll be playing going forward. The Colts managed to stifle Derrick Henry. With their defense, which is a plus for them. So, the Colts aren't bad. I just feel like the Jaguars are just a little bit better because of quarterback play. Yeah, um, you, you know, the Colts have a great back of QB, really. But, I mean, I, I just think that the Jaguars um, just slightly better because they don't have much uh, problems with Trevor Lawrence. And um, him getting injured, they don't have he he rarely gets injured. No. Saints beat the Patriots. The Saints are kind of up and down. They're now three and two. Also, however, I do want to mention that this is the second game in a row, I believe that the. Patriots pulled Mac Jones. I don't know what's going on with New England, but they are not looking good, and their offense is not set up for Mac Jones to succeed. Their their offensive line is not very good. Um, Jones is having to make a lot of decisions on the run or quick decisions because the defensive line is right in his face as soon as the ball is hiked. I don't know what's going on in New England, but maybe, I don't know, I've seen a couple of articles and some, I was watching ESPN and uh, the Rich Eisen show the other day, and they were talking about maybe it's time for New England to pull Bill Belichick's GM duties and hire an actual GM to do scouting and draft players or trade for good players. I don't know. Honestly, I thought that maybe a change of scenery for Ezekiel Elliott might be good for him. But he hasn't done nothing. He hasn't done anything in New England either. No. So, um. I, I don't honestly know. <laughs> New England is, is bad. They have a couple of bright spots on defense. Obviously, Matthew Judon is hurt right now. But you have Josh Uche, who is a situational pass rusher, who does really good when he comes in. You got some other guys on that defense that are good. But the offense is just horrible. And, you know, the defense can't stay on the field the whole game. They get tired. And so that's what's happening right now because the offense can't move the ball I know they brought in Bill O'Brien to change that offense to make it better for Mac Jones, but man, it hasn't done anything to fix the problem. And the fact that they didn't fix their offensive line problem, uh, Patriots are going to have a rough year. I, they're going to be lucky to win another game. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I feel like that right now... Um. You're one and four, and I mean right now, it's looking like you've got to cut Bill Belichick. 
right now. Because he's not, he's not doing much good things for you ever since Tom Brady left. They've only had one playoff appearance uh, ever since they left in 2019. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, it's just uh, crazy things going on down in New England. I don't know if you cut him as a coach because he did win you six championships, if I remember right. Yeah. There is something to be said of the way they're performing without Tom Brady. I agree with that. That show, just shows that Tom Brady was able to um, make, was, he, make Bill Belichick look good. Was able. I, I think that, yes, that's part of it, yes. He, he made him look good. But I think Belichick's a good coach. I think the difference is he doesn't have that quarterback that – can even if the play call maybe isn't the correct one, he doesn't have a quarterback that can walk up to the line and maybe audible out or make the right decision under pressure or with the defense, you know, in your face. Tom Brady was always good at either checking out of a play at the offensive line once he saw the way the defense set up or making that spectacular play that was like, you know, wow. You know, he did that, and I don't think Belichick has that right now, and I think that he's struggling because he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that quarterback that's going to make the, the big plays. So now they need to adjust their offensive game planning and the way they run their offense based off the fact that they don't have that quarterback back there that has that experience or can, when you maybe call the wrong play, audible out of it to the correct play to match what the defense is lined up, right? Because Mac Jones just doesn't, have that, just doesn't have that experience, nor is he that good. He's, a personal opinion, he's an average quarterback right now. He's not a great quarterback. And you went from having a great superstar, probably one of the all-time great legend quarterbacks, to an average quarterback. You can't call the offense the same way. You need to adjust it based off your personnel, right? And I don't think Belichick's done a good enough job adjusting that offense to the personnel that he has. Because... He did depend on Tom Brady to make the right play a lot of times, right? So I, I agree with you there. I think Belichick's a good coach. I think he's a great coach. I just think that, you know, he did benefit from the chip that Tom Brady had on his shoulder to be great. So I, I do agree with that. I definitely think they need to change something in New England going forward. I don't think, I don't think it's all Mac Jones. I think he could be better, but I think his growth has been stunted by a horrible offensive line play and by play calling that doesn't match what they have on the field. So I think they they could do better with that. They need to scour the free agency market to see if there's some serviceable offensive linemen because their offensive line ain't cutting it. Yeah, um, I agree with you. You know, they need to get a better offensive line because um, they're not really protecting Mac Jones. Mm-mm. And they, yep. need to, and, and they need to change that if they want to be the same New England Patriots they were. Yeah, their their for, defenses are forcing Mac Jones to make bad decisions because it, the offensive line is not protecting him. All right, the Falcons and the Texans. The Falcons beat the Texans. They're now three and two. I will say that C.J. Stroud has surprised me. He is doing well now. He started off a little rocky, but you know he's he's had he's strung together several good games, even though the Texans. Are two and three. He had 249 yards and a touchdown against the Falcons. And man, the rapport that he is building with Nico Collins has been outstanding. Nico Collins seems to be one of his favorite targets, and it's working for him. It's absolutely working for him. Nico has 
25 receptions for 467 yards and three touchdowns already with an 18.7 average yards per catch. So that's they're they're creating quite a combination there between receiver and quarterback. So he's uh, he's definitely building a rapport with some of his receivers now. They're filling each other out. I don't know if they're going to have a great year, but I think they'll be an okay year. And I think Stroud's actually coming along pretty well. Yeah, you know, um, when when Texans caught Nico Collins, um, and then they got CJ Stroud, I had a feeling that um, they were going to be a pretty good duo during the season. And right now it's turning out that they are – a really good duo, you know. Um, Nick, I, I agree with you. Nico Collins has been turning out to be CJ Stroud's favorite target. Mm -hmm. Seems like every yeah. week you see highlights on ESPN, Fox, whatever of Stroud to Collins in the end zone. Yeah. Yeah, um, I get what you're saying, you know. And um, I think this is Nico Collins. He is a big receiver. Yeah. I think he's six four if I remember right and like two twenty. He's a big boy. And he's one of those guys that'll go up and get the fifty fifty balls if you give it to him. And I think Stroud's figuring that out. Yeah, I agree with you. He did that at Michigan, but Michigan just didn't use him appropriately to his skill set. Moving on to the Giants and the Dolphins. Dolphins had a good rebound game, beat the Giants 31 to 16. Um, man, Daniel Jones looks bad. <laughs> if he got replaced with Tyrod Taylor in that game, but man, he just doesn't look good. Uh, I don't know what's going on with him, but he is having a very bad year. And then you got. Tua, who had a great bounce back game, 22 to 30 for 308 yards and two touchdowns. He did have two picks, though. So he has to be careful with the turnovers, but 300 yard, 300, he only missed six passes for 308 yards. That is pretty good with a 10.3 uh, yards average per pass. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, um, you know, I have I had a feeling um, before the season that Daniel Jones was going to have some struggles, you know. And uh, now it's looking like that is true because Daniel Jones is right now, he's looking like, uh, he's looking like saying quarterback is Mac Jones right now because, you know, um, he's not that great of a QB. I just, I, I I think he's good. He's he, he's an okay QB, but um, I just don't think that he will. I just don't think that he really um, you know, he's really a great QB. Yeah, I agree. I think Daniel Jones and the Giants are both overrated. I thought they were at the beginning of the season, and both have proven. To be absolutely overrated. I see the Bengals won had a good bounce back win against the Cardinals, 34-20. So Jer Joe Burrow finally looked like Joe Burrow. He looks like that calf injury is starting to heal up a little bit, not bothering him as much as it did at the beginning of the year. He threw for 317 yards and three touchdowns on 36 of 46 with one pick. They got their run game going with Joe Mixon. Jamar Chase had 15 receptions for 192 yards and three touchdowns. That's the Cincinnati Bengals we're accustomed to, right? Yeah, that's that's the Cincinnati Bengals we are used to. That that's that's the team we're used to. At least since Taj Boyd, T. Higgins, and Jamar Chase have all been there with Joe Burrow. Like that's the kind of that passing attack that we. With Joe Mixon mixing it up, you know, anywhere from eighty to hundred yards a game, you know, keeping the defense honest. That's that's what we that's what we're we expect from the Bengals week in and week out. Eagles won. 
They they beat the Rams 23 to 14. Eagles are still undefeated at 5 and 0. If I'm not mistaken, them and the 49ers are the only undefeated teams left in the league are the Eagles and the 49ers. And that is a true statement. Both 5 and 0. Yeah. So, Eagles and Niners are looking good. I know the Eagles are kind of skating by in some of these games, but hey, a win is a win. Maybe they'll catch up to them, maybe it won't. But Eagles were, hey, they're 5-0. and Can't argue with that. The Jets beat the Broncos 31-21. I mean, honestly, that's... Funny, because you know who the Jets' offensive coordinator is, right? Yeah. Yeah, the very person that Sean Payton said ran a horrible team last year, Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah, you know that Nathaniel Hackett was on the other sideline just smiling, grinning ear to ear, as the Jets were putting it on the Broncos. He had to be. I mean... <laughs> They scored 10 unanswered points in the third and another 13 to 8 in the fourth. And you know Nathaniel Hackett had to be over there smiling, just staring at Sean Payton across the field for those comments Sean Payton had earlier. This may be, the Broncos may have a worse season this year than they did last under Sean Payton. I don't know what he's going to do, but he better figure something out or his tenure in Denver will be a short one. Yeah, um... Yeah, I agree, you know. This might be um worse of season than uh than last year, you know. I I agree with you. Cuz right now they're 1 and 4 and this doesn't look like a great start for the Broncos cuz um you know, everyone's talking about how the Broncos going to turn things around with Sean Payton, Russell Wilson, what Sean Payton did for Drew Brees. No, it's not looking like that. Russell Wilson and Drew Brees are two different people. And you can't run the same type of offense for Russell Wilson that you ran for Drew Brees. Drew Brees was a, two, a true pocket passer that was, was not going to run on you. That's not Russell Wilson. He's not a true pocket passer. He's an okay pocket passer, but he's not He's not Drew Brees. He's not going to pass for you know, 5,000 yards in a game. Like, he's past that point in his career. But he was never that type of player anyway. Not like Drew Brees was. Like, you you can't run the same offense. you got to run a different type of offense for Russell Wilson. Yeah, I mean, Russell Wilson, Drew Brees are completely, like you said, complete, completely different football players. And um, I, I agree with you. You can't just run the same plays you did when you had Drew Brees with Russell Wilson, you you got to run different plays. That's not that's not uh, Russell, what you're supposed to do. Russell Wilson is the type of player that's more dangerous out of the pocket than he is in. So you need to run your offense like that for him. I know he's getting older, but that's who he is. You got the Chiefs and the Vikings. Chiefs skated away with a victory over the Vikings. It's a pretty close game. It's 13 to 13 at the half. And then the Chiefs scored 14 unanswered points in the third. And the Vikings got a late touchdown in the fourth. Ended up 27 20. Chiefs are skating by some of these games, but again, they're winning, and that's all that matters. A win is a win. Then you have my game. So I got a guy that I work with who said the 49ers and Brock Purdy were going to come back to earth. And so I looked at him. He's a Cowboys fan, just so everybody knows. So I looked at him and I was like, dude, you have no idea what you're talking about. I was like, Dak Prescott is the one who's going to come back down to earth. Because Brock Purdy isn't a superstar. He's maybe on the verge of average to star but what makes Brock Purdy good 
is he protects the football and he doesn't turn it over. He makes good, he makes good decisions with it. He gets it out to his playmakers. And his offense is set up to make his playmakers look get them open, right? He's got George Kittle. He's got Christian McCaffrey. He's got Debo Samuel. And then he has Ayuk as the other running back. But the 49ers built their offense around Brock Purdy and his strengths. And they tried to minimize his weaknesses, right? They put him in a position to succeed, to get the ball to his playmakers. And that's what he does. And I got another guy at work who's a 49ers fan. And so he asked me, he's like, who do you think is going to win? And I told him the 49ers. And for me, the reason why the 49ers were going to win was because the defense would be the difference. The 49ers defense is better than the Cowboys. It's clearly better than the Cowboys. And what happened on Sunday night? The 49ers deconstructed and embarrassed the Dallas Cowboys 42 to 10. I knew that was coming because the 49ers are better than the Cowboys. And in my personal opinion, nothing's going to change. Micah Parsons can say what he wants. He's dumb and doesn't always say the right things. Of course, he did go to Penn State, so that explains a lot of that. But my thing is that the 49ers are a complete team. Running, throwing, and defense. They are complete. That defense they have is devastating. Yeah, that's, you know, this is why the 49ers are the, are usually, are pretty much always the NFC favorites because their defense is always good, their offense is always great, and, you know, what they did to the Cowboys was just completely, they just completely humiliated them. 42 to 10. I saw, I did see that, um, the 49ers were going to win. I saw that coming, but um, I didn't see a huge blowout coming. Um, but well, Four sacks, four tackles for loss, six passes defensed, and nine QB hits. <laughs> I mean, uh, the 49ers were coming for blood, and they took it. They took the Cowboys' lunch money. And so Brock Purdy, again, 252 yards, 17 to 24 for four touchdowns. Again, nothing outrageous, just good football, protecting the football, making good decisions with the football. He had Jordan Mason, 10 carries for 69 yards and a touchdown. McCaffrey, 19 carries for 51 yards and a touchdown. And Debo Samuel had five carries for 30 yards. And they even had a Six person in Tyron Davis Price had six carries for 21 yards. And then George Kittle destroyed the Cowboy defense. He had three receptions for 67 yards and three touchdowns. And the other one went to Jusik for four receptions and 26 yards and a touchdown. Like they were on their game. In my personal opinion, the 49ers came out in this game to prove a point. And they did. They proved a big point. And if you want to look at the Cowboys stats, I told the 49ers fan that I work with that what was going to happen, they were going to pressure Dak. And if you pressure Dak and get after him, you force him into turnovers. And what did they do? They got after Dak Prescott. And Dak Prescott threw three interceptions. That's what happens when you get after Dak because he doesn't protect the football. And he forces it. And he forced it three times down the field and three times it got picked off. And he only threw for 153 yards and a touchdown. That is the difference. And so that is my difference. And so the other thing was the 49ers offensive line made Micah Parsons disappear. What does that mean? That means that he had no effect on the game because he couldn't even get to the quarterback. He couldn't do anything on the defensive side of the ball because they held him up. 
and they kept him occupied. And that was it. They neutralized Micah Parsons. And by neutralizing Micah Parsons, they neutralized the Cowboys' defense. And they rolled up the points. Anything you have to say on that one? Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, my defense right here was uh, this defense here. Because defense was uh, the whole difference over here. Because, mm -hmm. see, the Cowboys could barely even get on Brock Purdy. They, they, can, they could barely even stop the 49ers mm -hmm. from getting any negative yards. Because um, that offensive line just uh, was great against that Cowboys defense. Like, like you said, it made Michael Parsons disappear. That, uh, you know, that is true. He barely got anything. Anything. He did nothing. He disappeared in that game. And it was because of that stellar offensive line play. They accounted for him on every play. He couldn't do anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he can do anything. Nothing. All right, so the last game, Monday night, Green Bay and Las Vegas. I think the honeymoon with Jordan Love and the Packers is over. They're now two and three. And the Raiders turned him over, I want to say, three times on Monday night. Yeah. Yep, three interceptions with no touchdowns. So Jordan Love's kind of struggling a little bit. The Packers got some things to figure out. Um, the Raiders grinded that one out, 117-13. It was uh, 10 to 3 at the half, and then the Packers scored 10 in the third, 10 unanswered points, which made it 13 to 10. And then the Raiders got a late touchdown in the fourth that gave them the go ahead win, 17 13, on a Josh Jacobs run. So Raiders grinded that one out. <laughs> the NFC North is going, is the, it's the Detroit Lions. For the taking. Like, there's nobody that's going to come close to them in that division. Yeah. The, the Lions are going to dominate that division and win it. Yeah, the Detroit Lions are 4-1 and one right now. You got the Vikings 1-4. and four. You got the Bears 1-4. and four. Now you got the Packers 2-3. and three. Yeah, there's no way. NFC North is going to the Detroit Lions. There's no way that uh, any other NFC North team will clinch that division. It's... It's the lines all the way. There's no way. No other way. Yep, I agree. There could be, but right now, it's looking like there's no other way. Nope. All right. That's our show for today. Um, we thank you guys for listening. We appreciate everybody who downloads our podcast every week and listens to it. We hope you continue. Don't forget to leave us comments if there's anything you want us to talk about. We'll talk about it. If you don't like to, if you have friends or family members who don't like to listen to podcasts, please send them over to our YouTube channel. They can listen to our shows there too. And we have a Facebook page. So please continue to listen. Please tell your friends and family about us to spread our podcast. We thank you guys. And have a good night.